is also aware of what God is doing in the lives of others. Yeah, yeah that's, that. that's number one. Just yeah, be aware. Yeah, yeah. Listen for those wow. very spiritual things that people are saying around you that may not sound at yeah. first blush. Just the trivia one like you might yeah, And if you're aware, you'll notice. You'll notice. Yeah. Yeah. The second thing is, is that after you have an awareness of an opportunity that's opened up, be urgent. Show them the urgency. Show them the obedience. It says here that as soon as Philip became aware, situation when the Spirit reveals to him, hey, we need to go and take this guy's chariot. It says that he ran to the chariot. Yeah. So he's urgent. He's, he's, it. he's urgent. It shows that in the Spirit, it's six, 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 has to be necessarily an urgency because a spiritual door that's open today may not be open tomorrow. And a spiritual door in someone's life that's closed today may not be closed tomorrow. That happens with us. Yeah. Happened in my own life. Yeah. yeah. This if it needs to be in right here, right now, doing something in a certain state of mind, poised and prepared for spiritual interaction. It's right now. It's right now. Yeah. And we may not be in that same frame of mind a month from now or a year from now. Maybe not even tomorrow. tomorrow. Maybe not even tomorrow. Yeah. So, in my own experience, I remember a bunch of Jehovah's Witnesses that had not done my work when I was 22 years old, two years before my conversion to Christ. And I was open and I was polite and I was courteous, but it wasn't the time. It, 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 some of the things they said certainly got me thinking and yeah. got me aware of you know, spiritual realities, but it wasn't the right time. At that point, I just kind of went back into my punk rock thing for another two years and then emerged. Later, <laughs> some of the Seventh-day Adventists came in and began to witness to me. But my point here is that the door that was closed two years earlier was open two years later. Yeah. So we have to manifest some kind of just got an email from my friend just today, a good friend of mine, young man, younger than you, Ty, uh, just diagnosed with prostate cancer, and apparently a, form, a fairly aggressive form of it. Oh, now, praise God, he's a believer, but the point is, is that you, you might be perfectly healthy today and not tomorrow. Right. Those kinds of things have spiritual impacts. And that's the kind of circumstance, if he was not a believer, that might make him more open to some interaction, and so we need to be aware to step through doors that are open to, to us in a person's life, not assuming that if we, I don't want to do anything about it today or right now, that that door is going to be open for me. What's number three, David? Okay, so the number three is, and I love when, when Philip approaches the meeting, he doesn't begin by making a statement, he begins by asking a question. Do you understand what you are reading? Yeah, that's right. And so obviously he was reading something, and he saw something in his hand. Do you understand what you're reading? He was aware of the situation, and he was interested. That's what I said. The one who was aware of the situation, he was interested. Yeah. Most of our best spiritual conversations, Todd, with unbelievers or free believers, do not begin when we make statements about what we think and believe. This is the way it is. Yeah, but when we ask questions about what they believe, going on, and then whatever the thing is, yeah, that might be very prominent in the news. It could be what's taking Yeah, exactly. Through. Exactly. It could be, you know, something terrible like the terrorist attack, or it could be, you know, the diagnosis of their brother with cancer, or it could be the state of yeah. the environment, or whatever it might be. What yeah. do you think? Yeah, yeah. What is your thinking on this subject? And so when we show a genuine interest or investment in other people, they then open up to us, and it gives us opportunities to then that spiritual door as we speak to them as we minister to them. That's number three, the interest. Number four is be contextual. And what do we mean by that? I, contextual. I like the fact that it says that Philip was, was noticing that the unit was reading Isaiah. Isaiah. And so he doesn't say, oh, hey, I want you to notice this over here in Deuteronomy. Exactly. Yeah. He began where he was. And yes. the, the illustration for us is not just in terms of if, they're, if this Bible text are there, but if if they're interested in, in time health, events, talk about in time events. If they're interested in health, talk about health. If they're interested History. in history, start where they are. Start where they are. Yeah. Orange. Yeah. So, yeah. That's excellent. A basic piece of conversation. Because of that. You and I are. Oh, yeah, that's right. Because the limits of the net. I don't know. I started. I was just happy. 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 Yeah, or even something like, what's your favorite symphony? Uh, uh, what were we just talking about? 
<laughs> you know what I'm saying? So start where the person is, wherever that starts, you know, so we walk through that. Be contextual. Number five is be bold. Yes. Be bold. And here's so why. It's it says at the beginning of the scripture, mm -hmm. the scripture mm -hmm. Jesus there. At some point, at the earliest appropriate moment, the operative word there being, you got to show your hand. You got to show your hand and you got to make Jesus in the conversation. It doesn't start with, you know, you should come to my church, you should believe what I believe. This is getting to the heart of the whole thing we're talking about, that it's all about Jesus. Jesus is not um, a means to some other end. He is the end in he himself. the end in yeah. himself. Praise God. And so in the earliest possible moment, rather than, oh, I'm a seventh day, I'm a Bible, whatever, bring Jesus into the conversation. As soon as possible. Because he's attractive. Yeah. And even secular people who are turned off by Christianity and religion are often very open. Christ as a person. Well, we live in a very secular area here, and there's a common bumper sticker that says, Jesus called the other day, said he wants his religion back. So there is, <laughs> yeah, there, there is an awareness in secular society that there is a difference between Jesus, the person, the historic figure, and all the good things he did, versus Christianity, and it's rather sordid history. Exactly. So people bring Jesus into the conversation at the earliest appropriate moment. Number six is be wise. What we mean by that type is learn to recognize the, the conviction on the, the, the spiritual realities of the conviction on the face and in the body language of the person with whom you're For example, in the text here, it says, it says, hey, here's water, what you're best to do for the baptized. So, Philip is now aware, well, this guy's moving along. He's, he's showing a real interest. Yeah. Now, it might not always be that obvious, but learn to sort of be aware of conversational realities, human realities. How are they responding? Are they, you know, you know, sticking out their tongue at you? Or, you know, or are they nodding their head, rolling their eyes, exactly. or leaning forward, tell me more? So be conversationally savvy, be wise. Now, a lot of this comes from the Spirit. It comes from the Spirit's saying to you, hey, this person, hey, is, you know, six this person is showing a <laughs> genuine interest in what you're talking about. But you also have to remember, it's not only what we're saying externally to the person, but if what we're speaking is true and is in harmony with Scripture and with Christ, then the Holy Spirit is yeah, testifying to the truthfulness of what we're saying inside of their own experience. Yeah, yeah. 